Hey guys, what's up? It's Sean, Autotopia LA. Today's a little different in that we're dedicating this episode to Gil Losi. Gil, owner of this car, of the facility we're at. Kind of a legend, I would have to say, and I don't know that he would ever say that given what I've been told about him, but yeah. had a pretty big impact on things. Every kid around here, around California, around the whole United States, yeah. had some kind of Veriflex product. Yeah, yeah. Whether it was inline skates or a skateboard or a yo-yo. I never had the opportunity to meet him. Obviously, you were good friends with him, and it's, and it's just recent that he passed away, correct? Yeah, it's been almost a year and a half now. Got it. Great guy. Had a different kind of attitude. You had to really understand it because a real good joker. Yeah. You, know, so yeah. You, did, you didn't know if he was being upfront with you or, or just talking or messing smack, with you. you know, most of the time he's messing with <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just he liked to pull your chain. Yeah, a which is fun. Guy. It keeps you on your toes, yeah. right? Great guy. Yeah. You sent me that short video, right? And he talks about, you know, he's been passionate about vehicles his whole life. He had a truck when he was a kid. And one of the things that I remember from that video was talking about how stance was always a big thing to him. He liked a car sitting low, right? The only car you'd ever see Gil in was one that's landed on the was ground. Low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Had to be on the floor. You know, we met you recently. You rolled in in this car and all of us just stopped what we were doing and came out. I mean, the sound of it, the look of it, every element of this. So let's jump into what this is. It's a 61 bubble top. Bubble top Impala, right? Yep, basically a guy had it pretty much started going into body work and Gil just took it over and did his magic. It made grade eight at, at Detroit Autorama, which is, I mean, come on, it's almost impossible to make grade eight, right? Yeah. Did he have the intent of making a grade eight car or did he have the intent his, of making a car he just loved? His intent with this one was to win the Riddler. It was. And he should have won. Yeah. So he started with a car that's already in progress. Did it already have like some of the radical suspension and chassis no, and stuff? No, not that... at all. It was a stock roller and primer. No it glass, was. no nothing. Okay, so when you say in progress, it was barely in progress. Yeah, it was like barely it was... in progress. And then he goes deep on it. Super deep. <laughs> Usually I like to pop the hood and look at engine, but let's go platform up. Because I know you've told me a little bit about this car. The platform that this car sits on is pretty ridiculous. Well, it's a full custom one-off Art Morrison chassis. No one has one identical, nobody ever will. Everything on the bottom of the car is completely painted, pinstripe, detailed, paneled out. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. Wow. Is it all their front and rear suspension as well on it? It is, it is. Yeah. What's the rear setup on it? Is it a four link or something? Or? It's got a four link with a nine inch in it. And then I, I noticed the car's on air. Is it, who's the air system on it? Yeah, Ride Tech suspension. I mean, it's funny, I don't get paid by Ride Tech, but from what I've seen with the air systems, their shockwave system's kind of the best in the business, isn't it, pretty much? I, I do believe so. I mean, yeah. that's what we use at my shop. You do, yeah. You know, this thing cruises around like a Cadillac. You set the bags right, it's like a stock Caddy, just ready to roll. <laughs> with a whole lot of power. <laughs> Let's pop the hood, because this is where it gets kind of insane, you guys, is not like a one-off Art Morrison chassis is not insane, not like the look isn't insane, but let's be honest, at the heart of this thing, and we'll go around this whole car, but this is bonkers, you guys. Oh so, my God, dude. God. It's a Moran race engine. It dyno on the stand, well over 2,000 horsepower to the rear wheels. It to just the wheels? To the wheels, it just wasn't streetable. So we detuned it to 1,800 horsepower. <laughs> um, it's got uh, twin 80s in it. The 280 turbos. mil turbos. Yep. Is that an LS? It's a big block. It is a big block. It is oh, a big that's block. right. It's a 540, isn't it? It is. So it's a 540 inch big block, 280 mil turbos, but it's a built 540. Built to the gilt. <laughs> yeah. Was the 2,000 plus horsepower for the wow factor because it's we're going for Riddler? That was 100% the whole point. The biggest, baddest, coolest looking thing you could possibly yeah. put into something, get her done. Yeah, yeah, and that's, yeah. that's what it was for. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think of like some of the radical cars I've been in are like 1,000, 1,100. I mean, come on, dude, they're scary. You know, you're shifting second to third at 100 miles an hour and you're spinning tire right. and, you know, 2,000 plus. Wow, crazy, man. Who did the build of this? Steve Cook did, Steve Cook Creations. Everything they do is just over the top. I mean, seriously, all the metal work you see is all their custom fab work and it stuff. It is. Yeah. I love the matte finish sitting against the gloss. With well, the and all that came from the Ratster. Before mats were even released to the public, it all was tested on the Ratster, the Boyster 3. That's Which where, where the paint Gil came was from. heavily involved in that. 100%. To hear him say the development of matte finish, you know, and then looking at the Boydster, it's, uh, I mean, it's perfected here. 100%. Right? 
Do you know what it, we see exhaust-wise on this? I mean, that's all like custom one-off stuff, it's right? It's completely custom one-off. That was all done by Steve Cook and his company. It looks like a Hot Wheel underneath the thing. It's shiny and pretty and pinstriped. And, <laughs> and you were saying that these are actually stock Those are T3s. Those are, the, those are the headlights that would have came in the car when it was brand new. I mean, most people these days are going to go with one of the aftermarket companies, right? With a Halo, Halo or, something. or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or whatever. And I'm not even against it, right? Yeah. But like, on this? Yeah, it was just kind of one of those things like, hey, check it out. Yeah, you know? yeah. Has it been like cut and tucked and flushed and all e that everything. stuff? Everything. The bumpers have been cut. The, they've been sucked in. Every bit of trim on the car was actually made by Little Louie out of solid brass stock. And so then, none of this trim is actually original to the car. It's no, all it's, handmade, all, it's all handmade. Perfect. Most Impalas, if you look at them, you look down the sides of them, they'll be split sections. Yeah. Okay, well, this is all one piece trim. And you said it's made out of brass? Out of brass stock. Now, like looking at it, maybe it maybe it adds up, but imagine hand making that entire trim. I mean. Out of half inch brass food, stock. I can't even comprehend. And so I got to imagine like every panel on this car has been touched. I mean, it's, dude, it's a black car. We were talking about before, out in yeah. the sunlight. If yeah. there's a ripple, you're going to see it, man. 100%. This, this car is, couldn't be more straight. Straight as an arrow. And the stance, man, he got what he wanted. Yeah, custom one-off wheels, even the center cap sander pressure. Really? They're, they're three-piece wheels. Uh, Billet Specialties made those. Gil did all the concept of it. He drew them all himself. Do you happen to know sizes well. of the wheels and tires? The fronts are... 18 nines and the rears are Tony 12 and a half. And what does he run tire wise back here? Do you know? I mean, it's big kinda... fat ones. I think they're 315 45s. It's cool that it's got some sidewall on it. it. It definitely needs it. I mean, obviously, with this amount of power, a bigger tire would be a lot more beneficial. And, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. But again, this is a show car. It's not a. He wasn't going ripping in it. Right. Yeah, even though <laughs> you got 2,000 horsepower. Yeah. I mean, I think, actually, that's right. I forgot it's detuned all the way down to 1,800. When you say detuned to 1,800, is it it's still at the tire? Or it's is still it at the tire. Jeez, yeah, dude. With, with eight pounds of boost. Gil wanted to be able to drive it on the street and try to pump 91 through it, but it just wasn't happening. So we do a 50-50 mix of do you? C16 and 91. What is it running brake setup? Did I see bare? It's all bare. Is it a manual or powered system? It's actually electric powered. Oh, got it, okay. Mm -hmm. God, this engine bay is just something else, man. It's beautiful. I mean, it really yeah. is. Yeah, luckily uh, I got the task of being the caretaker of these cars and it's a super honor for me to be able to take on. Which by the way, you guys, I didn't mention this. I got all excited about the car itself and I kind of forgot, number one, all the cars that Gil owned are for sale, including this car. You have your own shop, Overdriven Performance, and then you guys do building of your own stuff, but at the same time, you guys are maintaining all of Gil's stuff. 100%. Pretty big honor, man. It, I mean, it's uh, words can't even speak how honored I am about it. Like, yeah. it's cool. I mean, the coolest thing he ever did for me uh, outside of this was he actually put me in Hot Rod Magazine and Motor Trend on an Oldsmobile that I got to help build. That happened when I first started my business and it really helped my business take off. Yeah, yeah. Wow, dude, very cool, man. So, so exhaust awesome. from the turbos come all the way out back? All the way out back, all stainless comes out to the very Oh, back. yeah, 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 wow. Yeah. And so that's all stock tail lights too, huh? It is, but all, again, all the trim was made out of brass. Everything on the car, trim-wise, was made out of brass by Little Louie. Just to clarify for me personally, are you talking trim like around the windows? All the, yep, all the windshield. Every the wind bit of trim we see on this car is a handmade, handmade piece. Yep. Holy cow, dude. I can't even imagine the amount of hours in that. And then how about the actual Impala emblems? Brass. Handmade again. Handmade out of brass. So I'm sorry to keep it. asking the question, yep. but my brain can't wrap around it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> handmade the Impala. And this, brother, is so slick. Nice little spoiler. I mean, you could walk right by and miss that. There's, you know? a, there's a lot of things. Even the induction on the hood is actually functional. If you look at a normal Impala, it still has a recess, but it only drops down about an eighth of an inch. Actually, so these are opened up a little more to get more induction. flow. Yeah, it's, so yeah. down here in the bumper as well, right? Yeah. Feeding area in. Yep, the whole thing's nose, channel, everything's done. Steve Cook Creations is Same thing the, on the grill here? Yep. Handmade, handmade. Again from brass. Yep. This car is so amazing, man. Gosh. All right, let's check out interior here. Usually I'm not a big fan of shaved door handles, but on this car, God, I mean, come on. Wow, dude. 
Wow, so it really is fully caged throughout. I mean, 100% it's caged. I mean, it needed it. Gabe killed it on the interior. That's Gabe's did the interior on yeah. this, huh? Yeah. And if you notice the center console, that CTSV Cadillac. Is that what that is, really? Yeah. That's what it started out as. The only carbon fiber is here on the interior? Yeah, on, on the interior. And then um, the gauges are all Dakota Digital. It's even got a backup camera. Does it really? It does. <laughs> and it comes and it comes up on the screen here. Yeah. <laughs> gotta say, man, that's that's smart on this car. Especially I noticed you got no side views on it. Like Gil said, we don't need no mirrors, we're going forward. <laughs> wow, even down here. Oh my gosh. That's Ferrari tell. red leather. Is it really? Yeah, imported Ferrari red. Yeah, and the headliner, how perfectly it fits and the cage workout just I mean, God, it couldn't follow the lines of the car better, dude. And that's like the German weave Porsche carpet or right. something, right? Yep. Is that a one-off wheel made for it as well? It is. Gil actually hand designed that. Really? There's actually a couple sketches of it when he drew it by hand. Super cool wheel. He designed that, huh? He did. And uh, there's actually four different designs that he hand drew and then uh, you know simulated it in the computer and then sent it over to Billet Specialties and they cut it out for him. Got it. I've been so excited about this that I keep forgetting things. I didn't even ask you what the transmission is on the car. So the trans that's in it is actually a 4L80E, fully built, and <laughs> yeah. you know, has to handle 2,000 horsepower. Yeah, 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 yeah totally. <laughs> yeah. yeah, otherwise it would just turn to dust under the yeah. car, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I believe it's even a reed case. The transmission? Yeah. So there's another one I don't know. Companies. They're probably the best transmissions in the whole entire world in the hot rod industry. Really? Nothing against everybody yeah, else. Yeah, but, yeah, dude, you know, seriously. When you're, when you're good at something and you know something and you stick to something, that's where you stay with, you Yeah, know? yeah, for sure. This car is over the top. This is one of those deals where every builder wants to build one of these before they're done building. Yeah. Over the top, nobody will ever mm -hmm. understand it unless they actually get to see it. People nope. look at it and be like, hey, you guys are asking 550 OBO on this car right now. Why is it so much? Well, the motor's 175 grand. I was gonna say, I, mean, look, I, <laughs> yeah. I, can, I can look at it and go, you're north of 800 grand. There was almost a whole million bucks in this thing. Yeah, I, I mean, yep. and it's understandable. Back Any of you guys that question that, look yeah. around this car. We all know that Gabe has perfect interior, but it ain't cheap. It's not, you know? I mean, I can't imagine just the trim work alone on this yeah. car. To say it's a million dollar build or right in that ballpark of a million dollar build, it's, it's yeah. of course it is. I want to see the trunk as well. We didn't we didn't look in there. And it's got all the amps and the sound system and all that stuff. And air and everything. Oh back yeah, there. everything's yeah. hidden. Yeah, batteries yeah. are hidden. That's one of the concept drawings of the car. When one of the original mm -hmm. ones. God, it's funny you say CTSV on the console and then looking back here, it looks. I gotta say, there's a Cadillac theme kind of. Yeah, isn't there though? Yeah, I can I can see that. Wow, beautiful dude. Well, I'll tell you what, if there's more to talk about, we'll talk about more, but let, let's throw cameras in and go, go for a little cruise. Yeah. Just so you guys know, this car's for sale. Point is, we are not gonna go blasting and show you that this car is actually 1,800 horsepower. If you have a question about it, just factor in built 540 and 280 mil turbos and do the math and I guarantee you, it adds up quickly. Right. Well, just <laughs> you could the, probably push it even further. Yeah. I mean, you said you're running eight pounds of boost on it. What right. if you went to 10? <laughs> yeah, that would be pretty gnarly. That'd be pretty gnarly. As badass as this car is, Brandon, I 100% respect towards Gil's family for letting us do this. So uh, we will definitely not be doing burnouts and throwing down in this car, but we will show you that it drives down the road really nicely. So we're gonna go drive it. Right on. not just love getting to drive something like this down the road. I mean, it's a absolute honor that I get to yeah. be, be with these cars, you know? Yeah. I've, I've got to drive some pretty fantastic cars, you know? And not only from Mr. Losey, but from, you know, my teachers too, you know? Yeah. And Bob Bowder and Robin Pellisier and, you know, Rocky Nash even. Like, every, all these guys around here have had such crazy cool cars. Yeah. Nothing to the extent of this one. I think this one's just over the top. It's over the top, not cartoonish. It's over the top, like, there is nothing not done on this car, including, I mean, dude, it's comical when you say, yeah, it's detuned down to 1800. Right. You know? I mean, it's not hard to do the math, bro. You got a built 540, 
Okay, I know that's up in the thousand plus range by itself. Now we throw on two 80 mil turbos. This is a perfect example to me of like, because some air ride cars suck. This just feels wonderful going down the road. It's not the bouncy. Right, still has a little cushion. It's crazy too, as loud as this car is out back, inside the cockpit, it's not bad. I mean, right. I'll bet when you put your foot in it. I've never, uh, I've, I've never understood that. Like I always, the people are like, you drive these cars and they're faster than snot, you know? And I'm like, I don't feel like I'm going anywhere, you know, like when you can't hear it, like then you yeah. get out and you hear it and you're like, oh my God. It's pretty amazing how quiet it is in here. Want me to get on it? Sure. Just a little bit. Jesus, dude. Just How much bit. input was that on throttle, honestly? Like barely touching barely. the pedal. Maybe a quarter. So you said it about 40, this thing's already spooled up and ready to... Ready to rock and roll. Jeez, man. Whoa. Whoa. I don't think most people understand 2,000 horsepower, sorry, only 1,800. Right. Count that much throttle input, you're you're probably what? 1,200 horsepower? Probably right. 1,000 horsepower? At least. At the tire? Yeah. I mean, like, I mean, I felt it like a slight little. Oh, she tried to pitch that. <laughs> now, you've also done some pretty hard. I mean, you were talking about you have a 55 that'll lift the front wheel seat. You're a pretty experienced driver, I'm guessing. I'm pretty good at it. <laughs> Boy, you ain't kidding, man. Those turbos are right there. You sure hear them whistling. They're ready to go. Son of a bitch, dude. I mean, just that little bit, we probably hit 100. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of the most refined builds in the world going down the road. And then the second you hit the gas pedal, there's no refinement. It's pure. Like this car wants to kill you, I think. It, it wants to go fast. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So do you have a preference, NA versus turbo versus supercharged? I just like to go fast. You like them all. You like to go fast. <laughs> <laughs> Good yeah. answer, dude. Yeah. I had the ability to race professional motocross. You did? Yeah. And. Uh, now we're getting my son into it, so. What size bikes were you racing? I was riding 125s. I got to go to, uh, you know, privates here. But yeah. I, I got to ride Supercross, I got to ride Motocross. No shit. Yeah, yeah, I did a lot of cool stuff, but got to go to World Minis, and shoot, I still got that trophy. Proud, yeah. Brandon. Yeah. <laughs> so, I guess that gets me. The older you get, with age comes a cage, come on. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> So you being a high speed, right? You've raced, you've done all kinds of performance stuff. Is this as much fun to you as it is me just cruising along in a rad car? Every time I'm in an old car, I'm having fun. Like even when you're just cruising, yeah, right? Yeah, it don't matter. It could be my, I built a 71 Nova for my son. It's got a stock 305 in it. I have fun in that thing. I love hearing that, bro. Yeah. This is what it's about. Classics and having fun and yep. hanging out with people and getting to do what we're doing today and yep. you know meeting big wigs that have been around forever. That, you know got inducted into Hot Rod Hall of Fame. You yeah. Know, so, you know, that's one day I'll be there. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Did he? You know, when Gil was still around, obviously, did he? Did he used to take this car out and enjoy it? Well, right now we have 32 miles on it, so. 32 miles? 32 miles on it. Okay, so, so I'm gonna go with no on that one. Yeah, it, the problem he had with it is uh, he just couldn't get it to run right. And, really? Uh, he sent it back a couple times and everybody just couldn't get it right. And then uh, finally I got it and was able to figure out the issues. But you by know? that time was he? He was already passed away. Got it. Yeah. So he just pretty much parked it and said it's for sale. Somebody else what a bummer that he never got to yeah. really enjoy it. Yeah. He got to rip it up and down the road a couple of times. Like I'd watch him fly by in it a couple of times, you know, like yeah. when we first brought it back, you know, after the show and you know, stuff like that. Um, his wife's favorite car was the Rivy. 
The car is really beautiful. And they would just get in it and go. I mean, that's a full custom chassis car too. Is it really? Yeah. That Sunliner that's in there has got over 170,000 miles on it. They drove it from here all the way to Florida and Tennessee and everywhere back. Wow. All the time. Man. Wow, dude. Yeah. So no, dude, he drove his cars. So how do you, so how do you continue to be here? Now that the car is drivable, he'd have been driving the car. Uh, he'd get in and put his foot to the wood. <laughs> he would. Oh, dude, I would just want to sit and cruise all day in this car. Right? And then wait for the freeway moment where you're able to spin the tires at 100 miles an hour. Right. You know, I know this does that probably. Oh, It'll yeah. break loose, no problem. Oh, yeah. such a freak show to see this rolling down the road. I would trip balls if I was out right. driving along, going to get lunch, and this came by. How long had you known Gil prior to working with him? 20 years. Wow, dude. Yeah, since, you I, way was, back since with I was him. little. Gil would only let my son wipe his cars down at the car shows and stuff like that. I find it hard to believe that somebody's going to get this car for in the ballpark, give or take half a million bucks. I mean, <laughs> a lot of money still, right. but you know what I mean. Like you, you couldn't, you couldn't come close to building this car today for that price. Not, not even close. Not at all. Wow, what a bitching experience getting to roll down the road in this car, man. Really, friggin' amazing, dude. Well, that was an extra special one for me today. I mean, given who Gil Losey was in the automotive community and so many other areas where he made a real impact, never having met him, but being out at his house, in his garage, getting to roll down the road in this wonderful Impala. I mean, certainly one of the finest custom builds I've ever seen in my life. Genuinely hope you guys enjoyed this one. I gotta say a big thanks to the Losey family as well as Brandon from Overdriven Performance for making this happen today and ultimately taking the time to let us do this. Truly appreciate it and I always appreciate you guys being there and hanging and watching what we do. And I will see you in the next episode. All right, man, later.